month, during my discussion of the Count Brass novels, I brought up the Elric series and how the omnibus collections of the books were kind of all over the map, and I said that I would do a later video with my thoughts on the recommended reading order for the Elric novels. Well, two weeks later is later. But first, a quick discussion of Elric of Melnibony and who he is. Elric of Melnibony is probably the character that Michael Moorcock is most famous for creating, and undoubtedly the most enduring incarnation of the Eternal Champion, and arguably a lot of people's gateway to the meta-series of the whole Eternal Champion mythos. Elric has appeared not only in Moorcock's novels, but in comics, rock albums, tabletop RPGs, and, heck, the companion to the sentient war and sword Stormbringer, specifically the sword Mornblade, even showed up in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, in what is probably an unauthorized cameo appearance. So, who is Elric? Elric is the sorcerer prince of the kingdom of Melnibony. The Melnibonians, who are basically kind of like elves, are a corrupted, decadent empire grown basically with sloth and various other nasty things, over sloth and wrath and, and bigotry and hatred, over their eons of political, economic, and military hegemony over other the other lands, particularly those inhabited by the humans and their young kingdoms. Elric, who is gifted in sorcery but is physically weak and also born with albinism, rejects his society and wants to reform it, so he travels to the young kingdoms to learn of their people. In his absence, Elric's cousin Irkun usurps the throne and drugs Elric's fiancée fiance and Irkun's own sister, Cymoral, in an attempt to take the throne and her for himself. To defeat his wicked, incestuous cousin, Elric must lead an army from the Young Kingdoms to sack his homeland, and to ultimately succeed, he will also need the power of the sword Stormbringer, a sentient blade created by Ariok, this dark god of chaos, who is the patron to the to Malnibony and to Elric in particular. However, Stormbringer has a mind of its own. Literally, it is a sentient sword, and like all living things, it must feed not on blood, but on the souls of those whom it slays. After Elric's efforts go horribly wrong, destroying both allies and homeland, Elric must wander the land in search of his destiny, as one of the incarnations of the Eternal Champion bound, perhaps even damned, to fight to preserve the balance between the forces of law and chaos. Now, due to the tremendous popularity of these books, and for a good reason, I should add, they are tremendously well-written, move at a tremendous clip, and if we're printed quite often, They've also been in basically the Appendix N, or equivalent thereof, for most editions of Dungeons & Dragons and numerous other tabletop role-playing games of the fantasy variety. And they've been reprinted quite often and are absolutely worth picking up. So, but there's a catch as far as for how you're going to read these, because the Saga of Elric began its life as a collection of short stories that were published in various fantasy and science fiction magazines throughout the UK and the United States, and they weren't written or published in chronological order when it comes to Elric's life, though those stories were compiled into a series of books by Daw in the 1970s. As the Daw paperbacks were published, Moorcock, in turn, published additional stories set at various points in the chronology because, hey, the books are doing well, they're popular, they're selling good, maybe write more of them so I can get more money. As most, as a lot of authors do, particularly with big ongoing series like, well, Conan, who Elric is kind of a, not so much a parody of, but a deconstruction of by doing a 180 and doing a uh, physically frail sorcerer um, who's dependent on magic, as opposed to a strapping mighty thewed barbarian with a giant sword and who utterly eschews and hates magic. Um, and so these are published at various points, with, various points within the chronology, though not at, after the end, because, well, let's just say, without giving too many spoilers, the Elric saga has certain things in common with, say, Space Runaway Edeon, Neon Genesis Evangelion, um and certain other works of that variety. I will say no more than that, except I will say that knowing that much going in enticed me into reading the series further. In any case, these reprints have been variable. Not in terms of quality, because 
the source material has generally been good, has been good, but it's in terms of for how approachable they are for a newcomer. Someone just coming into the Ark Saga from just having heard of it. Some have reprinted the stories within their internal chronology. Others have put, published them in the order that the original stories were published in an anachronistic order. The recent Delray collections fit the latter case. I like them because the Daw collections made some adjustments to the story that didn't fit with Moorcock's intent. And these additions fix that and also include some interesting ancillary material as well. However, putting the stories back in publication order, I think, makes it a little daunting for a newcomer who has to keep track of where the various books fit in the chronology, or don't, while they're reading. Now, Galantz has a more recent series of reprints, with the Elric stories repackaged in chronological order again, but it also includes absolutely all the stories beyond the Daw paperbacks, and some of the stories that were written later but set earlier feel like they require a much stronger familiarity with the larger Eternal Champion mythos, and even for that matter some of what's coming later than the earlier stories did. So, where to jump in? Well, I want to go with the Daw paperbacks. Kind of. See, back in the 80s, Doubleday put together a two-volume set of the Elric novels simply titled The Elric Saga, Books 1 and 2. These were published on their own and also through various book clubs, like science fiction book club, that sort of thing. These contained all the books with the Da paperbacks, with some modifications of, by Moorcock on some of the stories to basically undo the modifications that Da did with their editions. These two editions are my first real serious exposure of the Elric Saga. I picked up the Da paperbacks from used bookstores, freebie boxes at the library, that sort of thing. But the... Well, the Doubleday books are the ones that I read. That's no beating around the bush there. There's no real way to put a spin on that. It's Those are the ones that I read all the way through, where I got through the core, I guess, six paperbacks on um, in order on their own. And I say six books, they're not big books. Like, we're not talking like the giant Game of Thrones style bullet stoppers here. These are these are the kind of collections of stories that you got in the pre, like in the pre, even the does that, I want to say pre Tolkien era, in terms of when Tolkien got big in the U.S. Because these got were like written in the '60s and collected in the '70s, so this is after um, the official release of Tolkien came out. But I'd say more in terms of the pre. The pre Shannara era is, I guess, the way I'd put it, or the pre, um, pre Wheel of Time. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. The pre Wheel of Time era of fantasy literature, where people start putting out these big, giant, super epics of fantasy novels with these books that are like everyone starts leaning towards the hardcover bullet stopper, and that's not these Elric novel Elric stories at all. The original six are thin. They're briskly paced they you could probably get through one of them in an easy day like if you've been if you they're practically novellas like if you've read the murderbot books or if you read a lot of light novels these are actually fairly closer to the light novel in terms of general pace of the story and size of the book. They might even I even put them as like shorter as, than some light novels. So, for those of you who are anime fans who like your brooding, introspective, dark anime and want to read a fantasy novel that has a level of, like a tonal level similar to something like Evangelion or Edeon or Noir, but instead of science fiction, it's fantasy. Like Noir, I don't mean film noir, I mean Noir, the, 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 the anime series. Um, something with that relative tone, but, or for that matter, later Berserk after the Golden Age arc, this is a story that fits with that very well. Um, but if you like those, you will come in here and you'll have a good sense of what you're looking for pacing wise and in terms of tone of the overall story. 
And again, once you've read those, from there you can pretty much get into any other work in the Elric Saga and know where you're jumping in, whether it's the comics, whether it's the later novels by Moorcock, whether it's the whether it's the rock albums that like not just like the one that Michael Moorcock did with uh Hawkwind. I mean like multiple albums by various heavy metal bands in Italy and the UK and elsewhere. You can jump in on those and, and have an idea of what sentiment sense they're trying to go with for the overall story of Elric. Or for that matter, the cr crossover that uh Michael Moorcock wrote, where the one time Elric met Conan in the Marvel Conan the Barbarian comic book. In all of those, you'll be able to drop them in and have a sense in the chronology, if you've read those first six books, of where they are. And, again, I'm not trying to do a gatekeeping thing about you have to read these first six books. You read the, the Da books, the Da paperbacks, or the Doubleday Collection, which is an anthology, which I I recommend more. It's an excellent read. It's an excellent series. And everything else is basically supplementary material to those. So, with that out of the way, we are now basically caught up with pretty much everything I've read of Elric. And almost everything I've read of Michael Moorcock's Eternal Champion series, save for a couple things that I kind of want to do as a crossover. Um, I just have to find the right person to do them with. But I am certainly not done reading Elric stories, and I am certainly not done with covering the works of Michael Moorcock. There will be more that I will do in later videos. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.